Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have an enthralling problem for you all today. This one is from the Iran Math Olympiad in 2004. So it was posted on the Art of Problem Solving Forum all the way back then in 2004. Uh, and I just saw it reposted twice by different people. So if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so I'm gonna go over the solution. So we have a triangle ABC with circumcenter O. A line through O intersects AB and AC at M and N. S is the midpoint of BN and R is the midpoint of CM. And we wanna show that angle ROS is equal to angle BAC. All right, so I happen to find a fairly nice solution that doesn't involve any projective geometry. Um, so I feel like I got a little lucky here. Um, so I'm gonna show you my idea. Um, so it turns out that triangle ROS is similar to triangle MAN. So I noticed this with paper and pencil and I feel like I got a little lucky, um, but it's, it seems like it might be true um, looking at the diagram in GeoGebra. All right, so we wanna show that triangle ROS is similar to triangle MAN. And my idea was to use the gliding principle and that's because I saw we have two, two different midpoints. And whenever you have lots of midpoints, it's often a good idea to try to use the gliding principle. So um, I'd like to try to, I would like to try to use the gliding principle on triangles A, M, N, and R, O, S. But the thing is they're oriented opposite. So um, you'd have to reflect, reflect one of them um, so that they'd have the same orientation before you could use the gliding principle. All right, so the thing is, if, if they did have the same orientation, then if I reflect N across S, I get B. If I reflect M across R, I get C. And if I reflected A across O, I would get another point. And then that triangle with points B and C would be similar to both of them. But the problem is, like I said, they're not oriented the same way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reflect A over segment MN. Um, so when I do that, if I reflected A over segment MN, it turns out that that point has to lie on the circumcircle um, because MN passes through O. So I'm gonna write this out. So since MN passes through O, the reflection of A over MN has to lie on the circumcircle of triangle ABC. Uh, that's e easy to see in a number of different ways. Um, one way is if we extended MN uh, to meet the circle at two points, then those two points would form a diameter. And so from there, it's clear the reflection of A over that diameter has to lie on the circumcircle. So I'm gonna let D uh, be the reflection of A over MN. And then uh, it's clear that triangle DMN has to be congruent to triangle AMN. All right, so there's that congruency. And so now my idea is to try to take advantage of the gliding principle. Um, so if we reflect N over point S, we get B. If we reflect uh, M over R, we get point C. So now, what if we reflect D over point O? Well, that would be the point such that D uh, with that point is a diameter. So if DE is a diameter of the circle passing through O, then E is the reflection of D over O, all right? So if we wanted to try to apply the gliding principle, uh, basically we'd wanna show that triangles EBC and D and M are similar. And then we could apply it and they would have to both be similar to triangle ROS. All right, so I'm gonna show you exactly how that works here. Um, so first I'm gonna show, like I just mentioned, that triangle EBC is similar to triangle DMN. Um, and that happens to be an angle chase, but you have to know one thing first, which isn't hard to see and that's that MN is parallel to AE. Um, so that's not hard to see. So first I'm gonna draw in segments EA and AD. And first of all, MN has to be perpendicular to AD. 
Um, that's true because V is a reflection of A over MN. And then also EA is perpendicular to AD because ED is a diameter of the circle. Okay, so since both MN and EA are perpendicular to AD, then it follows that MN has to be parallel to EA. All right, okay. So now I'm going to do that angle chase that I mentioned. We want to show that triangle EBC is similar to triangle DNM. And here it is. So first, I'm going to show, calculate angle ECB. Uh, it's equal to angle EAB. And really, actually, um, that's just because the way uh, the configuration is in this diagram. It could be that uh, point E is on the other side of point A, so between point A and C on the circumcircle. But uh, for simplicity, I'm just gonna do the proof in this case, so where E is on the arc AB. Uh, so we have angle ECB is equal to angle EAB, uh, which is equal to angle EAM. And angle EAM is equal to angle AMN. That's because that's where we use the fact that MN is parallel to EA. And angle AMN is by symmetry equal to angle DMN, since D is the reflection of A over MN. All right. Um, and then we could do the same thing to show that angle EBC is equal to angle DNM. So I'm going to do that angle chase here. So we have angle EBC. Uh, that's 180 minus angle EAC because of the way the diagram is configured. And angle EAC, it's 180 minus angle EAN, which is the same as angle ANM, since uh, MN is parallel to EA. So those two angles uh, have to add up to 180. So angle 180 minus angle EAM is angle ANM, which is angle DNM. So that means we have to have, that means in the triangles ECB and DMN, two of the three angles are equal, so they have to be similar triangles. All right, so triangle EBC is similar to triangle DNM, and they have the same orientation. That's important. I didn't write it here, but if you take triangle DNM and you rotate it enough, uh, the angles of it are in the same order counterclockwise as uh, triangle EBC. And so therefore, we can apply the gliding principle, as I mentioned. And so if you look at these two triangles, um, E corresponds with point D. And if you take the midpoint of ED, it's point O. And then B corresponds to N, and the midpoint of BN is S. And similarly, C corresponds to point M, and R is the midpoint of CM. So we're good to go to apply the gliding principle. So this is what I just mentioned. Uh, we have three different midpoints of the segments connecting corresponding vertices. And so triangle ROS has to be similar to both of those, or I should say triangle OSR in that order. But if we apply the gliding principle, then triangle OSR is similar to triangle EBC and triangle DNM. It's similar to both of them, okay? So I feel like this is probably the key step in, in, in the problem. And from there, it's easy to finish it off because then angle ROS uh, has to be equal to angle CEB. And angle CEB is equal to angle BAC. So this is a very fun one. Uh, I like that I found an elementary solution to it, although um, it's not always often that I'm able to find a solution like this. Um, but you can also see other solutions uh, in the link that I'm going to give in the description of the video. Uh, so if you like this, give, a, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see other problems like this, uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks, everyone.